Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Nanam Paramam Dheyam Knowledge is Supreme Welcome back. So, in uh, so far we have seen uh, uh, that uh, given uh, any piece of equipment, how do we go about uh, identifying what are the control variables, uh, what are the manipulated variables, and uh, what is the uh, final st architecture or structure of the control system. Even though we did not formally see how do we screen uh, which is the best uh, alternative out of the, uh, all the possible options, uh, lot of times heuristics are used uh, or you go with what is the prior experience and sometimes there are some techniques uh, which we will be looking when we talk about multivariable control. Uh, so at the end of this uh, synthesis problem, what you have is uh, uh, a number of uh, different controllers and each of those controllers, uh, especially the our domain of uh, within the domain of this particular course we will have uh, so at the end of uh, this select synthesis problem we have uh, these different controlled variables and then uh, we have mapped them to a particular input. So this uh, within the context of multi-loop CISO strategy. Now a disclaimer is that uh, it is not necessary that this is the best architecture you can go with lot of times this is what happens at a regulatory level or the bottom level and uh, you would typically have uh, these uh, individual controllers uh, which are implemented at the very base level of a control system. So uh, once you have all this structure, the next question which we have to ask is what type of controller is this? Is this PPI or PID? Because again uh, this is the domain uh, or this is where we are going to restrict ourselves uh, the if you want to really generalize this particular problem selection problem it will be in addition to that uh, are we going to use any advanced control strategy uh, is it going to be a linear nonlinear controller is it going to be an optimization based controller so all those sort of questions come in uh, in this synthesis problem or uh, selection problem So for this course, we will be dealing with whether it is P, P, I or P, I, D. So in order to answer this particular question, uh, we have to use uh, some rules of thumb and which are based on uh, some analysis which we have already done when we talked about uh, the performance of P, I, D controller. So when we talk, so let us look at all these uh, PID controllers and that will help us formulate this rule of thumb strategy. So when you say P control or the proportional control, uh, the main advantage is it is very simple. There is only one uh, variable KC which you have to decide. It is often times very fast. It is a fast action. It does uh, based on the current error it is going to uh, take out the uh, give you the action. On the other hand, uh, when we talk about the limitation is that cannot get rid of upset. So that is the very main limitation of a P controller. Then we go to proportional integral control. So the advantage of a PI controller is that you get offset free response uh, 
but this comes at the cost of sluggish or slower dynamics. We have seen that a PI controller increases the order of the system, so the response of the system becomes slower or sluggish. And then lastly we have looked at uh, the full blown PID controller, proportional integral derivative control. The advantage is uh, it improves, it can improve speed of response. But at the same time, uh, it has limitations in terms of uh, can react to measurement noise, which is a very key thing. Uh, it may destabilize the process and uh, difficult to tune. This is the last uh, tuning problem that means finding the best value of Kc, Tau and Tau D. It is like uh, the controller is uh, having three particular angles which we have to uh, three, per three different directions uh, in which it has to optimize. So it becomes a difficult problem to select the best values of Kc, Tau Y and Tau D. So based on this, uh, the rule of thumb strategy is uh, as far as possible, try to use a P controller or a proportional controller. And uh, that means if your offset is acceptable, then always you would go try to go with a peak and type of a con proportional controller because it is fast. If the offset is uh, not acceptable, then you have to go with either PI or PID controller. So the demarcation between PI and PID is that if the inherent process itself is fast, then having an integral action on top of that is going to slow it down, but not to a very bad or not to a very great extent. So the combined uh, PI effect on a very fast process may still be acceptable and so uh, when uh, offset is uh, undesirable and the system is fast, you will go with a PI type of a controller and then if the system, inherent system itself is very slow or a multi-capacity process and you want to get offset response, then having a PI controller will slow it down even further. So in order to improve the speed of response, uh, you would go with a PID controller. So we will try to use this rule of thumb uh, to different sorts, uh, different types of control variables which are possible in our chemical engineering plants. And again, a disclaimer is that these are rules of thumb. This is uh, what uh, on, on an average or majority of the cases, uh, how these controllers would be. Uh, and uh, wherever possible, I'll try to give you some exceptions as to where this rule uh, does not apply. So we'll start with the very commonly uh, used controlled variable that is a flow control. So if you uh, try to recollect uh, the example which we had uh, about uh, the inline blending. <coughs> uh, there were two options, uh, two CISO options. So one of those was So this uh, controller 1 requires you to control the outlet flow. So this is a flow controller. So if this is the controller which we want to design further, then uh, what type of a controller we have to use. So as it turns out, uh, flow dynamics are typically fast. And mostly you want to set a particular flow going to a piece of equipment. So if it is a raw material flow, you want a certain flow rate going into the system. If it is a product flow, again, you want a certain product uh, to be delivered to the customer. So mostly offset free response is desirable. So based on our rule of thumb, uh, 
when i say offset free response is desirable it narrows down to two types of controllers pi and pid and as the dynamics are fast pi becomes the typical choice so lot of times when you see uh, a flow controller in a chemical plant uh, you will see that it will have a pi controller now there are two exceptions to this rule so one is a flow as secondary control objective in cascade strategy now we have not seen what is a cascade control so far but it is a control strategy where uh, there are two control loops which are connected together uh, one is a primary control loop and other is a secondary control loop so when flow is a part of the secondary control loop uh, typically offset uh, is not uh, uh, that critical and offset is tolerable uh, so in such a case uh, as in order to improve the speed of response you may have a flow as a proportional control <coughs> on the other hand sometimes this flow is also part of a multi capacity process so an example is shown here <coughs> uh, you can see that uh, this is the bottom of the reboiler and we are trying to control the flow of steam which is going to go to the reboiler this is a condensed this is known as a condensed throttle reboiler also known as a flooded reboiler where uh, the amount of steam which goes into the reboiler is controlled by the amount of heat transfer which is going to happen so the way this particular reboiler works is that uh, uh, you have this uh, condensate flow so as steam condenses after giving heat you try to control this uh, uh, flow of steam going into the system by changing this liquid valve uh, so when you open this valve uh, the amount of condensate uh, the level of the condensate goes down as the level goes down there is more area available for heat transfer so more amount of steam will come in so that is how this uh, steam flow is controlled by using this particular valve and what you can see is uh, the if this is a very multi capacity process uh, when you open this valve it is first going to change uh, this liquid flow as you change the liquid flow it is going to change uh, the level once that level changes the amount of area for heat transfer changes it changes uh, the way uh, the steam condenses and uh, once steam condenses uh, this pressure goes down so more steam is going to come in so it's a very fairly multi capacity process it's a very slow process so in such a case uh, the flow controller will actually be a pid controller so depending so majority of the just to summarize flow control majority of the times it will be a pi controller uh, when it is part of a cascade control and a secondary control objective it will be a p controller uh, if it is a multi capacity process like a flooded reboiler then it will be a pid controller now let us see how uh, the control loop will look like uh, so you have a pump which is going to deliver uh, this flow so there are two ways uh, in which this flow controller can be implemented one is simply having a wall at the outlet so you will measure the flow and then accordingly change the wall opening if the flow is higher than the set point you will close the wall opening so what it does is it changes uh, the resistance across which this pump has to do the work so more is the resistance less will be the flow through the pump so it works on that particular principle of the pump uh, the other way uh, you can control uh, this flow which has uh, some inbuilt safety uh, is uh, having a recirculation loop
so in this case uh, you will measure the flow and accordingly change uh, how much fluid recirculates so here the total amount of flow uh, which goes through the pump is uh, sort of remains the same and what you do is uh, depending on uh, what is the requirement you recirculate more amount of the fluid uh, so this particular strategy has uh, is going to have more power consumption because the amount of work uh, which is the, the amount of flow which goes to the pump is higher you also require a bigger pump uh, however uh, it has an advantage uh, that it will ensure that the pump always has certain um, minimum amount of flow uh, ensured through the recycle so this way it will try to avoid uh, the low flow regime of the pump and avoid cavitation and all those kind of mechanical and any mechanical issues arising out of low flow so this is more robust or it is more uh, it has inherent safety built into it but it will result in higher uh, cost of operation so these are the two simple ways in which flow controller uh, can be implement flow strat control strategy can be implemented and most of the times it will be a pi type of a controller <coughs> let us now look at the level control So level control uh, is typically, uh, as you recall the example of uh, the flash vessel, uh, in this case we had implemented level controller not as a primary control objective, but typically it is a secondary control objective. Because you want to do some inventory control you want to maintain a certain inventory of liquid in that particular vessel uh, so that it does not go dry or it does not overflow so lot of times offset may be acceptable so a lot of the cases uh, you know, when you have a level controller uh, you are okay uh, with the offset and you want a fast response so so proportional controller is quite common. For level control. So if you look at uh, the example of uh, the surge tank, what we had. Uh, if you look at the example of the flash vessel you will have a will measure the level and very commonly you would try to control it by changing the outlet flow <coughs> so that is how a level controller will be implemented in a process a uh, lot of times you try to look at uh, what is the outlet flow from that particular vessel and then try to control the level by using that particular flow <coughs> Next we go to pressure control. So similar to level uh, pressure control is also implemented as a secondary control objective. to maintain vapor inventory so offset may be desirable or may be acceptable so mostly it's a proportional controller so a lot of times uh, you would have a pressure control as a proportional controller so if we see <coughs> the example of a surge tank what we had so you would have a pressure measurement and uh, it's very cause so sometimes uh, you would have the outlet 
flow which is control uh, which is manipulated to control the pressure but it is quite common uh, that you also have some way to tie in the inlet flow as well so this is from a safety perspective and what we end up having is a single pressure controller which is going to manipulate both these valves uh, this type of control strategy is known as a split range control and we will see uh, the the split range control in more detail in the next week <coughs> so most of the times uh, pressure will be a proportional controller and there are two exceptions <coughs> to this one is and both these are around distillation top pressure control uh, so in distillation uh, pressure plays a very key role uh, apart from maintaining certain inventory of vapor inside uh, the column pressure also affects the vapor liquid equilibrium between the species so the extent of separation which is characterized by relative degree uh, relative volatility uh, it is a strong function of pressure for many systems especially when you talk about uh, vapor uh, vacuum distillation you are talking about very low pressure and uh, relative volatility is very sensitive to the pressure so in that case even a small offset may change uh, the performance of the column so in that case offset may not be acceptable so vacuum distillation may not be acceptable so that means we have to either use pi or pid control so again depending on the type of uh, sep uh, type of distillation column uh, we may have pi or pid control so i'll give you two examples uh, both are uh, industrially relevant examples so when you talk about air separation what you are going to get at the top of uh, this column is nitrogen which is gas so the way you can control the pressure inside this column is by simply measuring the pressure and accordingly changing this wall opening so this is a very fast dynamics so you can use a pi control now this pi controller was possible because we did not have any condenser here and the vapor uh, is the product at the top uh, the other type of or a more conventional distillation is that uh, you get vapor at the top then you condense the vapor and then the reflux uh, goes back so in this case uh, the way you control uh, this particular pressure is that the handle which you have to control the pressure is this coolant du uh, condenser duty so if the pressure inside the column is high uh, that means uh, the vapor there the enough number of vapors are not condensing so you have to increase the condenser duty so that more vapor will condense and the vapor inventory will go down and the pressure will also go down so here uh, it's a multi capacity process uh, the moment you change uh, this coolant flow it is going to change uh, the amount of when you change the wall it is going to change the flow of the coolant it is going to change uh, how much uh, the heat transfer inside this condenser how much vapor is condensing once uh, that amount of vapor condenses it is going to change the material balance at the top of the column and the pressure is going to uh, show its effect so it's a fairly multi capacity process so we'll have to use a pid controller here so having said that uh, every uh, uh, distillation pressure controller will not be a pid controller because you also have to weigh in about uh, the offset uh, whether the offset is acceptable or not lot of times high pressure distillation uh, small offset in pressure is not going to affect the extent of separation so you may even go with a simple p controller <coughs> next we go to temperature control <coughs> So 
so temperature uh, uh, most of the times uh, temperature is controlled because you want to maintain a certain temperature inside a reactor uh, so which is favoring the kinetics of uh, the desired product so typically offset is not desirable so you have two options one is pi or pid and again we try to follow similar rules uh, if the pro inherent process is fast uh, you will try to go with a pi controller if the inherent process is slow uh, or multi capacity then we will go with a pid controller <coughs> uh, a lot of times we have uh, the heating or cooling done through a jacket so it becomes a multi capacity process uh, so if i draw a reactor <coughs> Uh, which is steam is providing the heating so it is a endothermic process and we want to control the temperature inside this reactor so we want to change control the temperature by changing the steam flow so when you change the steam flow it is first uh, wall it is going to change the amount of steam going into the jacket then it will change the jacket temperature and then eventually it will change the reactor temperature so it's a fairly multi capacity process and then most of the times uh, this temperature controller will be a pid uh, controller and then the last type of variable uh, which we commonly want to control and i would say we want to control is the composition control and the reason i am saying want to control is a uh, lot of times you will see that uh, you will not see a composition controller as a pid controller per se so mostly it is the primary control objective offset is typically not acceptable so you would typically uh, want to think that it will be a pi or a pid controller and what uh, happens is composition measurement is typically very slow and uh, if we go back to our stability uh, analysis lecture you will see that the moment you have some sort of a measurement uh, delay uh, it is going to severely affect uh, severely restrict the amount of controller gain which you can put into that system and it eventually uh, results into a very slower or poor performance of the controller so because of that uh, even though composition is a primary controlled variable you will rarely see that uh, composition is controlled as a pid controller what you do is a uh, something known as a inferential control so you try to infer the composition uh, through a secondary controlled variable <coughs> uh, and most of the times this is a temperature control so even though we want to control a particular uh, composition of a particular stream uh, we would not uh, directly have a composition controller but we will have a temperature controller which will ensure that if the process runs at that particular temperature the composition control will be ensured and the composition control in that case would be part of a higher level controller also known as a supervisory controller so let me explain that uh, through a, an example so we had this uh, splitter uh, we had this uh, flash vessel so in this particular vessel i said that we want to maintain a certain bottom purity uh, but we would not have a composition controller per se what we would be doing is uh, we would have a primary temperature <coughs> we'll have a temperature controller 
which is going to manipulate the amount of heating or steam which goes into this particular vessel and with the assumption that uh, if I maintain this particular temperature because of the vapor liquid equilibrium and having uh, ensured that there is also a pressure controller uh, having maintained the, the particular pressure uh, at if I maintain that particular temperature I can ensure that the corresponding composition is also maintained and then we this is how uh, in indirectly we will control composition and in order to make this foolproof, uh, what you will also have is a secondary controller uh, which is going to measure composition. So, we will have a composition controller and it is going to give the set point to this temperature. So, even though this particular temperature controller is trying to ensure this Xb is equal to Xb set, uh, if uh, there is uh, some error in terms of uh, the VLE or the system is not behaving exactly as uh, for that VLE or there is some unidentified component, what uh, this additional controller will do is it will try to change this set point of the temperature controller, uh, fine tuning of that temperature so that you ensure the desired product quality. This would typically be a supervisory controller. So, with this uh, we have analyzed all different types of variables which you would see in any chemical plant and we have seen typically how uh, each of those control loops will be uh, whether in, in terms of P proportional controller, PI controller or PID controller and in terms of composition controller mostly it will be uh, some sort of a model based supervisory controller, it will rarely be a PID controller. So, we will take a break here and when we come back uh, we will look at having now decided the type of a controller, how do we go about selecting the best values of controller parameters that is the controller gain, uh, time uh, integral time constant and the derivative con time constant. Thank you.